Good morning, dear students. Today's lesson is the grammar topic of Unit 7. That's the present perfect tense. The most important when I talk about the tense is how to form the sentence. So, that's our start. How should we form the sentence? It must be a subject, has or have, then it's followed by the PP, past participle of the verb. Past participle of the main verb. For example, we all know the verb see. What is the past form of this verb? Exactly, so. Past participle is the third form of any verb. It should be seen. See, so, seen. See, so, seen. So, in this case, that's the place where I put seen, which is the past participle of the verb. When to use has and when to use have. It depends on the subject. If I have the subjects she or he or it, any singular absent subject, that should be followed by has. He has, she has, it has. If there is any singular nouns as well, the table has, the boy has, the girl has. What about the second type? The second type is when the subject is not absent or is not singular. We have I, you, we, they or any Plural noun as well. It's always followed by have. Then afterwards, the past participle of the main verb. That's how the sentence is formed. Many keywords that we have for this uh, tense. Already, just almost sense for how long, ever, never, yet, recently. We need to focus on ever and never. They are most important because these are two words that we will use in many of our sentences in grade 3. Examples. I have already finished my homework. She has just cooked the lunch. Also, the most famous example for this verb, for this tense, is the sentence that you always say when we are copying something in the class. Sir, I have finished. I have finished. That's also a present perfect tense. Now, we should know how should we make the negative form in that sentence. Have or has here is very strong. It carries another verb on its hand. Do you think such a very strong verb needs any help or assistance? It's very strong. It can carry another verb on its hand. This is why it doesn't need any help. It can also carry not he or she or it hasn't seen the pyramids. He or she or it hasn't been to Cairo. I, you, we, they haven't. That's a very strong verb. It could carry another verb in its arm. So no need for any help. It will carry not as well. So she hasn't then the past participle, he hasn't, then the past participle, it hasn't, 
then the past participle. I, you, we, they haven't plus the past participle. Okay. Ever and never. These two keywords are always used in the way we make the sentence. So, I always use ever for questions. Check that. Have you ever been to Paris? Have you ever been to Paris? Never is only used when I use a negative answer. No! I haven't, I have never been to Paris. No, I have never been to Paris. This is the formation of our new tense of today, which is the present perfect tense. The most important is for us now, what you have in booklet 7, the lists that could, can help you for identifying the, 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 the past participle form of the verb. So, we have the base form, the past simple form, the past participle form which we need for forming our sentence in present perfect. I've got two rows, two lists of verbs. We don't need to learn it by heart, but we need to make sure we know the past participle of all the verbs we know, then we can easily use it when we have a sentence in prison perfect. For instance, verb to be was aware that is the past form of it, and been is the past participle form. Drink, drank, drunk. Sleep, slept, slept. Mister, slept and slept are the same. Sat and sat are the same. Yes, but remember, we don't mix the past simple form of the verb with the past participle form, even if they are the same. Doesn't matter, as long as we know when we're using the past form of the verb and the present and the past simple. When we're using the past participle of the verb in the present perfect tense. That was all about our explanation. Now, what's most important for us is to get to keep as many past participle forms of the verbs as, as many as possible. So, we will fill in the space. Do in simple past would be did exactly. What about the past participle? It will be done. It will be done. Eat, eat, eaten. Good job. Cold, cold, cold. Sir, they are the same. I don't care. I know. When can I use the past simple form and when can I use the past participle form? Begin, began, begun. Give, gave, given. Now, that's another exercise where we need to choose the correct option. Should we use have or has? Have or has? Have or has? Maybe in negative as well. Haven't or hasn't? Let us read together. I don't know yet. Finished my homework. I space finished my homework. I have or I has? Good job. I have finished my homework. Let us check the second one. My son has, have or has started the university. My son. That's singular noun and it's absent. How do you know it's absent, sir? Because if it's not absent, I would talk to him and I would say you. 
So my son has started the university. Now we've got an extra exercise. That will be four main sentences and present perfect. So, how should I form a sentence according to this picture? They are planting a tree. Is that a sentence in present perfect? Let's choose it. No, that's wrong. They never planted a tree. Is that correct? Let's choose it. No. So, they have planted a tree. Let's check. Perfect. Next one. You can see the picture. So, we need to form a sentence in present, per in present perfect tense. They sold lemonade. Is that in present perfect? No. We have to use have or has plus the past participle. So, it's gone. They are, they are selling lemonade. Is that present perfect? No. They have, they has sold lemonade. They have sold lemonade. Which one should be correct? The subject is they. They exactly have. Perfect. Another sentence. She's catching the boss. Is that sentence in prison perfect? No. She has caught the boss. Is that sentence in prison perfect? Yes, she has caught the bus. She has caught past participle the bus. That was all for today. All the best, everyone. Thank you.